What is up my crafty friends? My name is Carrie and I want to welcome you to my channel today. Whether it's your first visit or you're a returning subscriber, I want to say welcome my friend. Y'all, I know I'm totally behind the times. I should have been making Christmas videos months ago, but between my son's wedding and all of the traveling for the holidays to Mississippi to see my family, y'all, I just have not stopped long enough to shoot any Christmas videos. You can see I still have my background. I still have all of my fall stuff. So I've got a lot of work to do. So be sure to follow my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming Christmas DIYs I've got coming your way. But for today's video, y'all, I'm teaming up with Sweet Urban Rose and we're going to bring y'all a Christmas Village collab. Now, I'm going to be using the cobblestone cottages that are in the stores now and Sweet Urban Rose is going to be using, well, you're just going to have to check out her video to find out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, consider hitting that subscribe button down below and turn on all those notifications if you don't want to miss anything I've got coming your way. So that's enough talking, y'all. Let's go make a Christmas village. If you want to find out how I pulled off this gorgeous Christmas village, keep watching. Okay, here's our Dollar Tree shopping list. We need poster board, garland ties, cobblestone cottages, condiment bottles, and an 18-inch tree. I'll be sure to put a complete list of the supplies I used in the description box below. The first step is to paint our houses. I've gone ahead and painted one ahead of time. This is what it looked like before, and this is what it looked like after I got done. I used a gorgeous rose gold glitter as the roof line. So, we're going to use some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Your first coat you want to paint super thin. We want it to dry really fast. Then we're going to go back in with a second coat. We're also going to be using some Mod Podge and some glitter for our roof lines. For the very first one, like I said before, I used this really pretty rose gold. And y'all look at this glitter. This is Hemway glitter. If you've never used any of the Hemway glitters before, you are totally missing out. I love their glitters because they come in lots of different size glitters. You can get the really chunky glitters or really fine. They are so beautiful and so sparkly. I'll be sure to put a link to Hemway glitters in the, the description box below. I also want to make some snow, so for that effect, I'm going to be using Epsom salt. Now, I did use this Glow and Radiance Dr. Teal's Epsom salt because it's what I had on hand, but you can find Epsom salt at your local Dollar Tree. We're also going to be using a blow dryer for the snow effect. That really helps to make it dry super quick. So I am going to start off first with my plaster chalk paint, and I'm going to paint one super thin coat all over the front and the back and the sides. You will need to put two coats on here, but I'm just going to do the first one on camera and then I'll do the second one off camera. Okay, here's our house all finished with our two coats. Now, the first one I did use the rose gold, so I want a little bit different effect because this is the same house. I think if I use a different color glitter and glitter different parts of the house, it'll really make it look different and you won't even notice that it's the same house. The first thing I wanna do is to decide what parts of my house I want to paint. Now, I am gonna be using this really chunky silver glitter for this house and y'all look at how pretty this is. It's really chunky, and I think it's gonna give the roof line a super cool effect. I'm so excited to use this, y'all. So, let's take some Mod Podge, and I'm gonna start off on just this little roof line first. I'm gonna also paint the top and some of the little side pieces of the roof as well, and I'm really hoping it's gonna make it look like a completely different house. Okay, let's get started. I'm just putting a little bit of this Mod Podge on the very top over the doorway. And y'all, this is so simple. After you get your Mod Podge painted, literally all you do is shake your glitter onto the Mod Podge. Now it's really important that you let your paint dry before you start Mod Podging. If not, you're gonna have glitter on places you don't want it and that's not gonna be good. Okay, now let's do the next part. 
whoops, I got a little bit of glitter on my house. I'm just gonna use my finger and wipe it off. So I do wanna paint a little bit of silver above this doorway as well. I did not do that on the last house. So again, I'm hoping by doing this, it looks totally different from the rose gold house. So a little bit of our Mod Podge and then sprinkle on more of our glitter and shake it off. This could not be any easier. It's so, so simple. Okay, I can't decide if I wanna paint this part of the roof above the doorway or not. It's sort of like a bay window, but I'm gonna wait and do that last if I do. So let's go ahead and paint our roof line next. I am going in pretty thick with my Mod Podge because I don't want my roof to dry before I get a chance to sprinkle my glitter on top. Trust me on that, I've done it before, so that's why you really want to kind of go in heavy with your Mod Podge. Either that or you're going to want to work in smaller sections. But I do like to do mine one thing at a time. We're just going to cover the entire roof. Now just take super care and don't get your glue or your Mod Podge anywhere you don't want your glitter. Okay, we're almost done. I'm also gonna take care and get the side pieces here too because I do want those to be glittered. If you don't want your side pieces to have glitter on them, don't touch it with your Mod Podge. Okay. Now we're ready to shake, shake, shake our glitter on. And y'all, this silver is beautiful. Wow, look at all the sparkle. So pretty. Okay, now I'll just shake off all the excess. Isn't that gorgeous, y'all? I love it. Now, I do see one little part here where I got a little bit of my glitter and I don't want that there. So while my Mod Podge is still wet, I'm just gonna pick up a paintbrush that's totally dry and just sort of clean up that edge a little bit. Okay, now it looks perfect. I have decided that I want to paint that little piece over my bay window, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that super quick. Okay, I'm all done with the glitter, so I'm just gonna use my paper towel and fold it up so I can just pour it back into my package. That's another thing that I love about the Hemway glitters. They are super easy to clean up because of the way that they package it. Okay, now I'll just close it up and I'll fold my paper towel up and get a new one because I don't want glitter in my snow. Okay, to make our snow effect, I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and everywhere that I want the snow, I'm gonna paint a super heavy coat of Mod Podge. Now I do want to go all the way around my building, but I'm not gonna want it on my steps. So I'm just gonna take super care and not get my glue on my steps. So I'll start at the back first. And I'm gonna paint that Mod Podge directly onto the base. I am gonna work in sections for this. So after I get it on, I'm just gonna sprinkle my Epsom salt directly on top. I do want this to have a really heavy snow look. So that's why my Mod Podge is really, really thick. Now I'm gonna use my blow dryer to dry it. I want you to see the difference. You can let it air dry, but I'm super impatient, so that's why I like to use the blow dryer. Okay, there it is. It really does look like snow. So now I'm gonna go around the other sides, again, taking super care not to get on my steps. It's gonna be so stinking cute. 
Okay, y'all, here is our finished house, and it is so adorable. I love the gorgeous sparkly roof, and that snow on the bottom is super cute. But I think it needs a little bit of snow at the top, so I'm going to do the same thing I did to get the snow effect around the bottom, and I'm going to add just a little bit of snowfall on the corners of my house. When you think about where snow would naturally fall, that's one of the places. So we'll repeat the same process we did for the bottom. Okay, now let's sprinkle on our Epsom salt. And blow dry. Okay, here are two houses, and y'all, even though these are the exact same house, because I did the roofs different and in different colors, they look totally different. So now the fun begins. I have to do the other three houses, and I'm going to do some of them in the rose gold, and I'm also going to do some in the silver. Okay, after we get all of the houses done, then it's time to move on to make our base. And for that, we're gonna use foam core. So I've got three different sizes of foam core that I've cut out. I've also got some condiment bottles, and I'm also gonna use a bowl just to elevate my base a little bit. If you want yours to set directly on the table, you can totally omit this. So I've got an eight inch circle, I've got a 12 inch circle, and I've also got an 18 inch circle. I'm gonna be using my hot knife that I picked up off of Amazon to cut those out. And y'all, this tool is such a lifesaver. It made cutting out all of this foam core a breeze. Now, in the center of every one of our foam board circles, I'm gonna be cutting another circle for the middle. This is gonna be the same size as the top part of our condiment bottle. It's one and a half inches round, and I did just use my condiment bottle to trace around and then cut that out with my hot knife. You just want to make sure you've got it in the center first. You don't want your stand to be all wonky. We're going to cut that piece in each one. On the very bottom 18 inch circle, I'm actually going to cut a second hole. This is going to be the same diameter as the condiment bottle. I know you're probably thinking to yourself, what are you doing that for? But trust me, you'll see in a minute. I'm gonna use my hot knife to cut that out, but do not throw this piece away because we're gonna be using that in just a few minutes. We're gonna be using some E6000 as well as our Surebonder hot glue gun with our tough sticks. And y'all, this thing is gonna be super sturdy. So next, I want to put it onto my bowl, and this is what's gonna to help to elevate my stand. And again, if you want your stand to set directly on your table, you can eliminate this. Now, there is a little lip on the inside, so I will be having to use a lot of hot glue to fill that in, but I'm gonna be using E6000 and hot glue, but you want to make super careful not to get the hot glue in the very center. Next, we're gonna take one of our condiment bottles and that's gonna fit directly in that center hole. And that's why we needed that hole cut. So now I'll move this off of my workspace and move on to our next two tiers. Next, I'm gonna take my other condiment bottle and I've still got my two tops here. One top is gonna to go on the top and I do want to go ahead and cut the, the very tip of that off. You'll see why in a minute. Let's double check to make sure that our bottle fits into our hole and it's a perfect fit. Next, I'm gonna use my hot knife and I'm gonna cut a little circle and I'm gonna glue my second condiment bottle top onto that bottom. I'm sure you are probably scratching your head wondering where I'm going with this, but just trust me. Now, the top that I'm gonna be using is gonna be the top that I have not cut the tip off of. I'm gonna use my E6000 and also my Surebonder hot glue gun to secure this down. You will want to hold this in place until your hot glue cools off. Okay, we're just gonna insert that in. Are you confused yet or have you figured it out? Okay, as soon as it cools off, we'll move on. 
Okay, so here's our bottle and we're gonna go ahead and secure that to the top here. I'm gonna just use hot glue this time. If you wanna double glue with your E6000 and your hot glue, you can totally do that. But I'm not, I'm just gonna use my hot glue. To give it a little bit of added security, I'm gonna use my hot glue gun and just run a bead of hot glue all the way around that outside edge. Okay, now we're gonna bring back our 18 inch piece. And now we're gonna take our 12 inch piece and put that onto the top of our condiment bottle. I'll use again my hot glue to secure it down. This project is coming together so fast. Okay, and we'll hold this down until it's cooled off. I'm gonna do a dry fit before I glue this down because I wanna make sure that all of my measurements and everything are correct before I make it permanent. And this is gonna be the bottom of the piece that we glued onto our eight inch board. That's the cap to our condiment bottle. Okay, it fits great. So let's go ahead and put some E6000 into the screw holes onto the condiment bottle top and we're gonna screw it down. Now you can use both hot glue and E6000, but I just used E6000. I was afraid my hot glue would dry too fast. Okay, now do you remember the little ring that I told you to save that we cut earlier? Now we just want to cut a little slit in here and we're gonna slip this over that little space that's in between our condiment bottle and our foam board. And I'll use my hot glue to put a little bit of glue around that edge. Okay, y'all, we are almost done with this stand. Looks good. So one of the very last things we need to do for our stand is to just go ahead and coat the whole thing with a coat of spray paint. I'm using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white. While the paint's drying on our stand, I'm gonna go ahead and use my garland ties and I'm gonna go ahead and flock those. These did come from the Dollar Tree, as did the 18 inch tree. I did use one of the garland ties just to fill in a few of the branches on that tree to make it a little bit fuller. I do want them to have a sort of snowy effect, so I've got some cornstarch in a little shaker jar. I've got some faux snow from the Dollar Tree, and I'm also gonna use my Epsom salt. And y'all, this is a super easy technique. We'll just take one of our garland ties, put a little bit of Mod Podge on one side. You don't want to Mod Podge both sides because the, one, the other side we're gonna be using to glue to our foam board. So we just wanna coat one side. And this is your project. So if you want a little bit of flocking, by all means, just put a little bit of Mod Podge or if you just like it totally green, you can do that too. I'm gonna go pretty heavy with mine. I do want it to have a really wintry wonderland look to it. I'll just coat one strip at a time. And then I'm gonna shake on my cornstarch. I don't want to coat it with too much cornstarch because I do want it to still be a little bit wet so that some of my snow and my Epsom salt can stick to it. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that on. If you wanna speed things along and help it dry, you can blow dry this, but I'm just gonna lay mine to the side and let them air dry. Okay, that sparkly snow from the Dollar Tree does give it just a little bit of sparkle and I totally love it. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my tree and the whole package of our garland ties. Okay, it's all done and they're dry and now it's time to glue these garland ties to the edge of our foam board. This is really coming together super quick, okay? 
Now I'm going to repeat this process for the other two tiers, the top tier and the bottom tier. Okay, y'all, here it is. Now we have one last step, and that's gonna be to screw the top onto the condiment bottle for our very top. And this is gonna be the one that we cut. I'm gonna glue this on with a little bit of hot glue. And we're gonna insert our snowy Christmas tree into the top. You won't need the legs that come with the tree, so you can just hold on to those because we might have another project. And y'all, that base just sets right down into our little hole. If you wanna use some hot glue to secure it down, you totally can. Okay, y'all, now it's time to put it all together and see what it looks like. I just picked up some of these sheets of snow from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna put it on the base here, and then I'm just gonna kind of fluff it out, and then I'm gonna place my little houses. I did go with a rose gold and a silver, and then I also used the houses that I painted last year. I'm gonna also fill in with some of the bottle burst trees from the Dollar Tree and some of the little gold picks from the Dollar Tree that I just took apart and made them look like dead trees. I think this project is so gorgeous. All in all, I have around $15 in the entire thing, and I think that is totally worth it. This is something that I can use over and over again every single year and add to it and change out as a finishing touch, I did sprinkle on a little bit of that faux snow from the Dollar Tree, and that just gives everything a little bit more sparkle, and I think it's so pretty. I do have some of the battery-operated tea lights to put inside the houses, so all that's left to do is to add those and to turn it on, and I may even add some lights to the very tip top of the tree. What do y'all think? Do you love it? Let me know down in the comments below what you think. That does it for today's video, y'all. If you enjoy it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me. And don't forget to check out Sweet Urban Rose and see what kind of Christmas village she's going to be making for you as well. Until next time, happy DIYing, y'all.